Just graduated from the University of Tampa and I was back in New York in August of 1988. I was in my room sleeping. All of a sudden, my consciousness somehow was in someone else's home. It was like being there in person, the, the way I was able to experience everything. What I saw was a man with gray hair asleep in his chair. I felt an entity was there and it filled a whole place with hatred, very, very negative uh, emotions uh, permeated uh, throughout the place. A slender man with dark hair, take a knife and slit the throat of the gray-haired obese man. In shock about what I had seen, I had never seen something so grotesque. And the negative energy was so strong that it was I was almost swept away by it. And it took considerable willpower of mine to suppress it. And when I awakened, I had to look around to make sure I was in back in my room. The next day, uh, I, I told my mother about the experience, which I had never really spoken about dreams that I recall uh, in, you know, maybe as, as a little kid. There were police cars uh, in front of our neighbor's house. Uh, it was up the street, maybe four houses up, uh, off the side of the street. And uh, we, we um, asked, you know, what had happened and uh, our neighbors, uh, Seymour and Arlene Tankwolf, uh, were murdered. Uh, their son Marty wasn't harmed. He was, uh, I believe, 18 at the time, starting senior year. He was actually uh, brought down uh, for questioning to the police station after being interrogated and them claiming that his father came out of a coma uh, to say that he did it. After, you know, convincing him of all these things, he, he confessed. He actually came to his senses and recanted, but that was enough to get him convicted of the murder. It was actually a hitman who had uh, told people that he actually had killed the tank lifts.